What's up, everyone? Welcome to Lane Sharkin with Travis, and today our special guest is J.C. Albonaga, our special, super special salesman and idea guy extraordinaire. Welcome, J.C. Thank you, Travis. Glad we finally got to do our podcast, and right. uh, we're going to let the let the subjects go where the wind blows us today, because I'm sure Ooh. they're going to be random. <laughs> so, uh, again, welcome. Thanks Thank for your time. Appreciate it. Glad to have you. Uh, so we're going to start out just kind of let you tell everybody who you are and what you do here and how you fit in and how you don't fit in. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I uh, started with Lane Shark um, oh, what, about five years ago, a couple couple months after Ross. Um, we were at the old place. Yep. And uh, it's good. Didn't know anything about tractors. Couldn't even tell me what a bucket is or anything. So the training was very important to have uh, for me personally uh, and learning everything to know we, we could about this industry. Um, but prior to that, you know, I was in many industries myself, mostly in the car business, mm-hmm. uh, talking about um, all different departments and such, marketing, sales, uh, service. And then prior to that, you know, had a little dab in the restaurant industry myself or more of a nightclub industry. Oh yeah. Well, uh, what exactly did you do in the nightclub industry? I don't guess I remember that one. So, uh, while I was doing uh, personal consulting, uh, in the automobile business, which basically I, I had an ad out in the paper and you called me if you wanted me to go in and negotiate your car deal for you because mm-hmm. you didn't have time to do it or you just didn't want to deal with the car dealerships. And so what I did is I'd sign an affidavit with you. Um, and also get power of attorney and I'd just go in and take care of everything for you for a hefty fee. But the fee was more, it would be a lot less than what you would have paid if you would have gone in and done it yourself. Cause I I, I, knew how to work the deals down, mm -hmm. work the deals down, get the commissions down, you know, salespeople and dealers just want to make money. I let them make money, but not a whole lot of money. Like they could have made if you didn't go, uh, if you didn't let me go in. All right. Uh, so I did while I was doing that. Um, one of my customers ended up uh, hiring me to run his nightclub, and had no idea what I was doing there. And he said, "Don't worry, I'll teach you everything." Uh, but I need you to go to this Hilton Hotel and take this uh, State of Florida food consulting or food um, uh, licensing health licensing test. I can't even remember what it's called, but everyone has to have it in order to be a opening or a or running of any kind of a restaurant right. in the state of Florida. You have to physically be there with that license or else you can't serve food. Huh. So they teach you all sorts of things in the three-hour class and then only about 1% pass it the first time. You know, I got a 71. and so the barely. High, Yeah, barely. <laughs> the, guy, the highest, I think this, um, the highest score was 73. Oh, wow. Mm-hmm. So out of 80 of us that were in there, only four of us passed. And uh, next thing you know, we, I hung my license up and I said, what do I do? And he said, just follow me and walked around with him for about three days and then he left to Italy and it was my show. <laughs> so your nightclub that served food or just We had a five star kitchen but served bar food. Huh. But it was predominantly uh, when you look at it from a square footage it was twelve thousand square feet and it had five bars, two VIP rooms, and each location can order food for the patrons, uh, so fried foods, things like that, stuff right. that's quick to, you know, when you're out drinking and dancing, you just want to get a quick hors d'oeuvre. Um, so we provided that, but mainly it was a nightclub atmosphere, so fast-paced drinks, fast-paced service. Um, gotcha. And did that for three years while I was doing the consulting side of it. it yeah. Was so a, you, so you've done, you've done all kinds of random stuff. Every, I feel like every month you tell us a new story. And you were in some sort of other industry that I had never heard of before. Like I, I, I feel like you may have told me the the nightclub stuff, but I don't, I don't recall that one. The one that stands out to me, obviously, is the car dealership stuff because it's it mostly pertains to, to doing what you're doing here. But one of the things that I learned about you what last year was that you were in a band. Yeah, yeah. During that time that I was running that nightclub, I was also in a band. And you were the drummer. Yeah, drummer okay. of the band. We're gonna have to play that song in like in this podcast. It's. Uh, <laughs> It's a really good song. Um, you know, did that for five years. Uh, we almost got signed um, by uh, uh, Paramount Records, uh, but the uh, the powers that be in the band, which is your the front man and, and probably lead guitar player, they 
butted heads and it was uh that was it. Y'all broke up before you could get pop freaky. Get before popular. we could get going. Yeah. That sucks. So it's uh it was fine. Everybody, you know, still good friends with ninety percent of the band and everyone's gone on to do their things, you know, you know, from firefighters to the military to Right, and all sorts of stuff. So to to sales at Lane Shark, to sales at Lane Shark. Yeah, yeah. So you've been here five years and didn't know anything about tractors when you started. That's right. Now you know uh, just as much as pretty much everybody else here, and uh, do a wonderful job selling as much as possible. Uh, what do you, what do you th- what is like your favorite part about working and doing sales itself? The creativity, um, every every aspect of your, your your account management coming up with new ways and different ways for them to understand you know the value of the product because then it sells itself this product sells itself right. it's just more of guiding them through the journey of accepting it and then being able to deliver it you know at their pace yeah uh, with their know-how um, for me it was the service side learning the service side of it and getting to do the service side the first few years um, before we expanded was was huge because that's the biggest part of the sales is being able to know the ins and out of it right you know what can fail and then how to overcome it yeah so creativity i guess that's uh that's, a, that's always a fun part of a job being able to come up with new ways to do things you are always coming up with new ways to do things and some some of the ideas are just <laughs> you, you blow me away some days but it's it's uh you have so many ideas it's hard to it's hard to sift through them all but uh, but yeah, the la- the last one is the uh, the newest dealer agreement that we've got, which I feel like has worked out really well for for the dealers because they're able to keep keep stock a lot more, and get just know that they're going to have what they need when they have it or when they need it. So that's been very helpful this year. Kind of giving them the control right. this time instead of the customers controlling you know what they need to get. Right. Yeah, the creativity side. I want to touch on that. It's it's such a a moment to moment and it's fast pace and and I really enjoy that uh, the instant the instant gratification of helping somebody yeah and we have so many different dealers and they all have so many different backgrounds so you have to be creative at a minute's notice to be able to help them solve their problem or solve their customer's problem and uh, and get them taken care of as quick as possible yeah and they're they're just like us they just want to be treated right just like their customers want to be treated right. So if we, if we provide them with that kind of, um, you know, atmosphere mm-hmm. that they, they would want to call in and talk to us. Right. You know, you're going to have situations where it's, it's heightened, you know, and, you know, uh, heightened emotions. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you have to know how to deescalate. Yeah. And I think a lot of the, like, especially with the, the webinars that you're doing now, training these guys, getting them to where they have the material that they can get to without calling in directly to you. So they can, like if we're busy and you've got three other phone calls that you got to take, they can, they can jump on our dealer portal, uh, watch those videos that you're doing right now. Cause we're, all of those are saved on there for them to watch at any time. Right. Yeah. We're releasing those soon. Um, and it's going to be X access is huge for these guys. Cause they're, they're at their own time, their own pace. And they just, they, they, they can't, they can't expect us to be ready for them when they call in. So they have to have the ability to get this information on their own, on their own time when their customer needs it. And that's, right. it's huge. The, everything we're, everything that's being done in marketing is huge. Uh, the dealers are blown away just with the things we've done so far and how fast we've been able to get there and do it. And just the, the innovativeness of everything we've been doing mm-hmm. supersedes what they've been normal uh, or what they've been um, exposed to. And we're talking about guys that have been in the business 20 plus years to two years. Yeah, it's one of the benefits of being a newer company. And plus I like to, I like to explore as many ideas as possible. So like we're a newer company, so we're not stuck in our rut like these older companies are. And so we're able to, one, we already have newer stuff, and then we jump on the newer stuff as it comes in, especially having Nick and Brandon to be able to sift through the stuff that we that would be beneficial to us. And, like, Nick building the, the 3D model with the part picker and all that stuff has been – it blows me away with how quick he can get that stuff done. Yeah, I mean, it also starts also going a little bit further back from that. You know, your, your ability to provide an alternative way of 
this industry's uh, you know productivity for ag equipment. Mm -hmm. You know, how many companies out there started on social media? I don't know. I think a lot of the companies out there started before social media right. existed. Right. So it was very um, innovative to reach the consumers that were already in that platform. Yeah, I do think that's a big thing that makes us stand apart is we're very customer focused on our messaging and our marketing. We talk, we deal with the customers almost first and then, then they find the dealers. Whereas like, we, so we like create the demand with the customer and they, they pretty much are completely informed of what they need. They just go into the dealership now. Whereas like when we first started getting dealers, it was, it was kind of a weird balance. Like we would have the, the only way we got dealers in the beginning was the customers would go to these dealerships and be like, hey, I want a lane chart. And they're like, I have no clue what that is. So then the dealers would call us and be like, hey, I want to sell this stuff, which is, I, I, like I say, I, I'm, obviously I don't know other companies that, do, that have done it that way, but it definitely worked well for us. It was uh, very innovative and less expensive to do it that way. And it way. wasn't like, even like I did it on purpose. It was just the only way I could make it happen. Like right. I didn't have any money. Your budget to, was low. Right. Yeah. I had yeah. no money when I started this company, so I just put it on Facebook and – that first video that Kyler did for us, it just took off like wildfire. And, uh, I mean, obviously we've put money behind it for ads and stuff, but like on Facebook, I think it has like a million and a half views. It's, it's wild. So, but it, and again, it wasn't like I was trying to be different. Mm -hmm. I wasn't trying to be innovative. I just, this is what I know how to do. So this is what I'm going to try. And it luckily it worked out for us. And again, you're much younger at the time. You're, you're in the thick of the social media lifestyle where a lot of our dealers, you know, 30, 40 years ago, you know, they needed that paper mm -hmm. they need, or that print ad. They needed the radio. They needed television, billboards, you know, to to move any product that they had, yep. um, you, know, running, you know, running parallel to the manufacturer. Where today, they're still doing that, but we're just running circles around them with uh, all of the digital marketing we're doing. Uh, it's, it's It speaks... It speaks volumes on the reach that we're getting for these dealers to be able to have customers um, at such a very good budget. Mm -hmm. you know, and I think that's what sets us apart from um, the, the the standard. Yeah, and I'd be curious to know, like, how many other implements out there sell tractors? Because, you know, we have so many people that will call us and be like, hey, I'm looking to buy – I want a lane shark. I need to know what type of tractor to buy so I can make sure I get this. Or hey, I saw the Lane Shark. It's not big enough for my tractor. What tractor do I need to upgrade to? Like yeah. that. That that's, that's like huge. the first time that ever happened. That blew me away. And it happens continuously. Yeah. Uh, just today, gentleman called in. He's in between two orange colored tractors, and he's asking for my opinion. I've never driven those two tractors. I, I couldn't do a walk around on those two tractors. But he wants my opinion that would work best for our product, which I understand that they want – their goal is this product, and they want something to back it up that's going to support it. Mm -hmm. um, but the tractors do so much more than just run lane sharks. It's 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 amazing to see that that we get those kind of questions. And, and I appreciate the level that they're at, the respect level, I guess, that we right. have. But we're able to give them some guidance, you know, say, look, go try them all. And see which one best you know fits your budget and and, and the performance that you're looking for, you yeah. know we'll make the lean shark work. Right. Yeah, it's really cool to hear to see that trust that they have in us, and we've never when we've never even spoken to them. I, and I, all that's because of like what these guys are putting out on social media and all the the stuff with the information that we put out. So it's it's awesome. And then now with us getting into the selling grapples and stuff, it's going to open up even a, a bigger avenue for us to gain that trust with with people and teach them what they need and what their tractor can do. I look forward to see how, how this keeps evolving, you know, with uh, the the lineup that we're trying to put together here with other things. Mm -hmm. It's um, it's going to get out there. Folks are going to really need us. And I think it's important for us to, to be transparent, especially on the website, having as much information as possible for them to be able to make informed decisions. Uh, it, it, like you said, it, when, they would go to the dealership and tell the dealership, I need this. You know, that dealership was like, what is this? Right. Now the dealership doesn't have any reason not to just, hold on, let me just check it real quick and right. look at it. So, Yeah, it's uh, it's it's pretty cool, especially with Brian reaching out to all these dealers, trying to trying to get to the dealers before the customers come in and, <laughs> and ask for it. That's, that's always uh, 
it's always a tough battle because if the customer, if nobody's ever came in and asked the dealership for it, they're gonna be like, well, I don't want this. I don't, I don't even know what it is. So we, it's, it's kind of funny. Like we are trying to get the dealers, but we, I, I think we need to focus. We need to focus more on informing the customers always, because once we inform them, they, they'll, they'll almost work for us informing these dealers, mm -hmm. which is a pretty cool thing that has worked pretty well over the years. Oh yeah. And especially with the new stuff that we got with the, um, I think it's, I think we've made it public with the, um, the di the, the 3d rendering with the lane shark on the tractor and the third function, all that yeah. it is out now. Yeah. We need to link that. I, I, I've wanted that thing f <laughs> for seven years. I even had Nick before, whenever he was working at Coldwater, I had him make a small diagram for me. And then I got, I guess I got distracted and we never completed it, but the new one is, is really cool. Cause you can click on, click on every component. It takes you to it. It shows you how the routing is. It shows you a picture of it. I think that's going to help a lot of customers understand the, the equipment before they ever even leave their computer. Yeah, the my interactions with the salesmen of you know the dealerships about that specific product is they they can build value with the customer as they're trying to sell the kit. Right. You know, they say, look, click on this, click on that. You know, the next annotation feature is awesome, and you can dive into it. It's got a little picture that pops up that shows exactly what the pro what the item is, and and then an installation guide with mm. it. So it's uh, it's so cool. It yeah. really is. <laughs> it's so cool. Yeah, we're very fortunate. We've got some really uh awesome people that work here and that that can ba build these things mm -hmm. especially as quick as nick builds everything it's it's fun to watch is our, our wizard well speaking of building things you've got a third coming <laughs> yeah baby number three yeah i'm gonna have a house full of boys so a june 27th is whenever he's due yeah yeah and I'm, then, I'm, I'm and then we're done and then we're done <laughs> I'm very lucky just to have Daisy. Yeah. yeah. Could you imagine having three Daisies? No. As busy as she keeps you. Oh yeah. Yeah. She's 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 amazing. Uh, you know, and I'm lucky to have Leslie also because she's she takes great care of her. And but I couldn't imagine having more at that same age level. I don't know how my mother did it. I don't know how my older sister did it. I don't know how you do it because they all have little ones. All the credit goes to Megan, man. I, I work. <laughs> I work every day. She's home with them and raising them and turning them into little people. It's uh, I, it's a lot of work, man. I uh, you have a production factory going over there. You should just keep going to see how many you can get. <laughs> she'd probably kill me if we had if we had more. But I'm very fortunate. Like we're able, she's able to stay home with them, and we don't have to send them to daycare and stuff. And then my mom, being you know, she lives with us right now while we're building her house. And then when she, whenever her house is done, it'll just be right, right up the road. So we have we're very fortunate to have uh, to have what we have to be able to to raise three boys like that. So it's exciting. It's always yeah. something new. Yeah. It's um. Have you have you come up with a name yet? Yeah. It's uh Teddy. So Theodore Alistair Odom his full name he's gonna megan wants to call him teddy so that'll be his name that's awesome yeah. um jack's gonna be a good big brother to both of them now and yeah yeah it's exciting it's really cool to see like it's just to hear him talk about like the baby in mama's belly like he talks about it all the time and oh, uh, it's, it's really cool like he's that's he's very uh he's very in tune with a lot of things <clears throat> and I, it blows me away what what they catch on to and how quick they learn stuff. Yeah, I was watching a video she posted on um, the boys riding their uh, four-wheeler. Yeah, their little power wheels. Little power wheels thing. And it looks like it was doing circles and they were both falling asleep. <laughs> that was a perfect way to put them to sleep. I, Fitz is wild, man. Like he he just doesn't care about nothing. Like he he'll just fall asleep in that. And Jack, Jack, I think was I think he was pretending. Like I think he oh. noticed that Fitz was getting like we were paying attention to him being asleep, so Jack pretended like he was asleep. But I don't know. He could have he could have actually been asleep and then woke up and then started pretending. But yeah, they they all they do is ride that thing in a circle, and sing Paw Patrol. They are obsessed with Paw Patrol, so they're just out there riding in circles singing the Paw Patrol song. Mm. It's hilarious. Cherish these days. Lots of videos. Oh yeah. I get with Daisy. We go to. Bedtime story, she'll say, I want to see Baby Daisy videos. And she just loves going back and seeing what she didn't remember. Uh -huh. And it's always something new that she catches now. She's getting older. She can articulate it. Mm -hmm. um, and she loves it. 
Yeah. Yeah. Anytime, anytime somebody's playing a video on on the phone and they can hear their own voices, they come running. They're like, "What? What are we doing? What is happening?" Oh. Wow. Yeah. They 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 love hearing themselves. Yeah. Yeah. She um just the other day, I was I happened to be playing one of our my band songs in the car. And she's like, I really like that song. And she's <laughs> jamming out to it. And she's like, play it again. And she's jamming out to it. And I said, that's daddy on the drums. And she goes, what? So she's a little older now. Yeah, she can, awesome. you know, even though she's heard them before, she, she loves, she loves hearing that. Now she just talks, she did went to school and just started talking about it. <laughs> I got the information from the teacher. She's like, so you're in a band. <laughs> I was like, yeah. I think good they, thing you're not in like some crazy rap, Rap uh, group singing <laughs> all that stuff. You'd be going to going to school with some dirty rap lyrics. <laughs> I, if I had the opportunity to do drum tracks on a rap group song, I would do it all day. They make so much money. <laughs> <laughs> just to, just the royalties would be awesome. Yeah, I can imagine. Yeah, my buddy uh, who is a band, the guitar player in our band, did that. You know, spent a lot of time in hip hop studios, doing some guitar licks and for their songs, a little little quick four to eight measure stuff that just went along with the song. Right. And he just he gets paid. Yeah, that's a that's a really interesting way, like to make. You could there's no telling how much money you can make with just being in there and getting the little royalties on like hundreds and hundreds of songs. Like I couldn't imagine. Just well, you can you can opt in and get the up upfront money mm-hmm. in case it doesn't pan out. Uh, a lot of them will do that. A lot of session session players will do that because they need to pay rent. Mm-hmm. But if you've got a little bit of little bit of savings and you can sit on it, you think the song is going to be a hit, and yeah. the artist that it's attached to pay out twenty fold. Oh yeah, huh. it could. Yeah, I mean, the, yeah, but that's that's the thing. Like, I've always I've always been one to sort of take those type of chances. Like when I when I moved to Greenville, I was building houses. You know, we got paid on production, mm-hmm. and at one time when it slowed down, like everybody wanted to go back on training pay, and I'm like, I'd rather take the chance because mm-hmm. I could make five times what training pay mm-hmm. is, or I could make zero, but I'd rather take the chance to make that five times. Like, it's like a no brainer to me. Like, there's always, and you you. Especially like with that, like one song could pay you more than you ever made taking the upfront money. It could. It's always, but I, I like to take chances. So a lot, lot less now that I have all these responsibilities, but I used to take a lot more. It's a numbers game. You, you're you got twelve tracks, and you're on all twelve tracks. Maybe only in ten. There's a chance that one of the ten right. hits, and it's just like getting paid if you took it up front for all twelve tracks. Yeah. Yeah. So it's pretty, pretty lucrative. The um, I was going to say about the car business is it's the same thing with the pay. You know, you, you start off with the training pay and then you go to a draw and you kind of set your commissions depending where you work at. Um, I always saw that a lot of people going back to, oh, I'm going to take, take my, keep my training pay, my salary. You know, that's not a lot of money for the amount of hours you're working and right. how much studying you have to do on the vehicles and then how much follow-up you have to do with customers. It's just not. You want to go for your commissions and that's... Yeah, that's a lot a, of people like the guarantee. Um to me, it's always a. I always looked at it as a, it's a guarantee that I'll just be able to pay bills. Whereas I would, if I gamble on myself, mm-hmm. there's no telling what kind of money I can make. And I mean, everybody's different, but that's just that's just how I've always been. Like I'd rather take the chance. I mean, yeah, I may go broke, but I also could do really well. Hence, and that's why you started this company. Yeah, because you took the risk. Been very fortunate along the way. Like yeah. I've had. I've had a lot of failures along the way, and I've had some successes. And currently, right now, I'm in a, I'm in one of the successes, and I hope it stays that way. <laughs> what were you an Amway rep or something? <laughs> <laughs> no, no. <laughs> no, I just like when I moved to Greenville. I like I say I was 21, and I made you know next to nothing. And then at one point, I was the highest per- paid person in the office, and then uh, had a bunch of houses taken away from me. And so I went back to making basically nothing. I left there, went to another company, and within a year, I went from a superintendent to area manager. I had like 15 supers working for me. So like a lot of ups and downs. Then I left there, went and worked for my best friend, running a heat and air company. Did really well there, but didn't love it. So then I started my own uh, construction company. Did really well with it, but wasn't living life the right way. Mm -hmm. And kind of ran myself into the ground and that's when I moved back here and fortunately Lane Shark 
sort of happened. And I mean, I'll, like I say, I, I moved back here. I was in debt, broke, and uh, thought Lane Shark was just going to be something for dad. And I was going to try to build houses here. And, you know, it took off and been very fortunate. So it's been nice to have those failures, though, because it teaches you a lot about how to succeed. And when you are you successful, structure. how to, yeah, structure. Yeah. That's yeah, a good, good way to put it. Yeah. And you, the trials and errors always, you know, are complementary to, you know, future success. For all of us, no matter what you're doing, it, uh, it, it speaks volumes. You know, I like the, I like the story because it's, um, you know, you don't, hear a lot of that kind of a story with especially when I talk to the dealers and stuff you always hear well my daddy had this business my granddaddy you know or you know which is amazing because they pass it down mm -hmm. you know and you get to start that you know with this company so you'll that's that will be the story to be told later by you know Jack and Fitz and right. and, and Ted um, but is it Ted? Teddy Teddy yeah. Teddy but your, your story is really you know I was living on a I love it. It's um, I'm sleeping on a couch and trying to start a business. You know, I was living in a camper. Or in a camper. Yeah, I lived in my I lived in a camper for two years. Wow. So when I'm I moved back and I sold my condo that I had in Greenville, paid off some of my debt. I lived at my mom's my mom my stepdad's house for like three or four months. Um, while I was starting Lane Shark, and then I bought a camper from my papa, and literally lived right behind Walmart, literally across the street. On that. Yeah, right there. That, that camper across the street. Oh, nice. Lived there for, in the camper for two years, and uh, and then I bought the the little house over there, and then mm -hmm. remodeled it. And Megan moved in, and you know, then we had two boys and had to move again. So yeah, you could definitely see your skills in the building side of it in that remodel. That was, yeah. that was pretty awesome. Yeah, that tore, tiny little space you turned what you turned it into turned, is amazing. Yeah, yeah, tore it down to the bare bones. It had a lot of it had a lot of rot. And uh, some termite damage, so I had to rip all that out and remove all the cancer, and then rebuild it from nothing. Meanwhile, we were, we were trying to get you to design a switch box during that time too. <laughs> it happened. <laughs> it did. Yeah, we need to try to show that video of me <laughs> where I where I was messing with it and got it to work, and then realized that I couldn't turn it off, and I'm like cussing <laughs> myself. I think that's one of the joys of. Early on with uh, with Lane Shark is you know you letting me go into the shop and build switches, switch boxes. <laughs> I was like I've never done this for you. Like I don't care. I need it done. So I was like, got the camera going and like I'm it's, actually building a switch. I'm doing circuitry. This is one of the jack of all trades things I've got to put on my list. Right. I I love building switches. Like it's very therapeutic for me. So like. Which obviously, I don't ever get a chance to anymore, but whenever I was doing it, before we hired Jackson, like I would take them home and work on them at night because it's something that I can do. I can see the immediate progression of what I'm doing, and I know that it's right. And it was just I could do it, and I could listen to a book, and I could like absorb the book while I'm doing that because this is just like repetitive. It was, it was almost like a meditation for me. And now I don't ever get to build. <laughs> it was um, it was so hard on the fingers. It was like I've, mm -hmm. my fingers are too big, I think, for that kind of a job. But if you ask my mother, you know, God bless her, she said I had the hands of a surgeon. I'm like, I don't know what you're talking about because <laughs> there's no way I could have done that for more than the time you had me do it. Yeah, that's just uh, my fingers just get in the way of themselves, especially trying to wrap the. The, the the rubber seal around it and then sticking them through that hole and all that I just I didn't feel like I had any feeling it was just, what am yeah I you hitting? get you figure out ways to to hold it different and it it it's pretty seamless once you once you spend enough time but you you only did probably what ten or fifteen nothing like maybe yeah. ten and uh, when once Landon, you do a, once you do a few hundred of them you get you get the that's hang of it. that's what I was telling Landon I said I said you know what you need to before anybody else comes in here after you to build these things you need to set the mark. What? How many can you do in one day? And we were talking about what eighty. Let's see if we can do. <laughs> He's like, I'm going to break the record. I'm going to set the record and break it. I said, let's no, let's let's come up with the record, and then we can set the tone. Obviously, then you know we've morphed from the switch boxes to the handle to the handles. But he uh, did like he did go one day, one or two days to see how many he could get. But I can't I can't even remember. I think it was like thirty. That's a lot. Yeah, I mean it's a lot, especially from yeah. start to finish, because we would build them in stages. You know, we put. Just like an assembly line, we like we do certain things over and over and over, and then do the next stage, which, um, which now, man, I don't even know. We probably sell what 
20 switch boxes a month that's a, max now that's all the switch handles so we have dealers that um our older dealers if you would uh that before we came out with these wr long kits that built their own essentially their own wr long kits right. for it with our switch box so they just buy five or six or ten switch boxes those are the same ones still ordering they haven't graduated to just has has Parrish stepped up to buying the the seaflow kits or are they still building their own yeah they're they're buying some are they not at the pace that they could. Right. And it depends on which store you're, you're referring to. Yeah, I think them and Parrish were the, the two biggest holdouts that I was just like, man, I wish they'd, I wish they'd start buying these kids. But you, like you said, that they have a system in place that's made them successful mm-hmm. for a long Very time. Very successful. Yeah. So we're, you know, we can only that's appreciate That's why I always it. ask about it, and I don't ever force the issue. Because, like, I'm not going to upset the apple cart that they have because yeah. it's, a, it's a good one. Yeah, and, and there's other dealers that, you know, we'll sell a lot more cutters that than we see kit orders, and they're obviously doing their own setups. Right. And so, uh, you know, we'll support it as long as they do it right. But then, you know, they do call and need. Oh, I have this specific one. It's a little bit tough. Do you guys have a kit for it? Right. Uh, I had one of those actually today, and it's uh, uh, on an LS2, by the way, which they're still out there, which is great. Yeah, there's there's still a few of them out there. They're still brand new. Through. Full warranty. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> it's crazy. I would have thought all of them would be gone. Yeah. You know, and and I think um the the biggest group that sold was those special edition ones that we did. Um that's that's just a slick color when you do it that way with right. the with the bright. So you got a black foundation and then you have the lime green stickers and it just looks tight. Well, yeah, we're going to do the LS4s. We're talking about that today. So we're actually going to do... Oh, breaking news. Yeah. The LS4 <laughs> Special Editions in black. You heard it here first. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, so I was actually going to talk to you about that. We'll send out a, an email to the dealers yeah. next week and give them a chance to go ahead and reserve them. Because I don't know if we'll do 100 or 200 this time. It just kind of depends on the interest. Yeah. Um, we'll find out. Uh, there was a lot of dealers that uh, missed out on it, mm-hmm. that asked about it. Okay. So... You know, we'll see if they, they'll step up and want to get them. It all depends on how many they, you know, we do a minimum of, you know, per store. So that, that usually dictates anything last time. Did we do know, a minimum last time? Was yeah. it two? Mm-hmm. Well, we're only going to be doing the LS4, so it won't be the LS2 and the LS3 like we did last time. So we can probably just keep the minimum at one if they want it. Yeah. Because that's like the um, that Kubota L6060 special edition that they did. Mm-hmm. I think. I wish I wish I would have been buying a tractor at that time. That one that's like the burnt oh. orange. Oh, it's the burnt orange one? Yeah. Oh, okay. It's, uh, I don't remember what it, it wasn't special edition. It was something else. But anyway, like they, basically the dealers could only get one of those tractors. And uh, they yeah, were I'm, slick looking. I think it's Yamar. I might have a picture of it. Uh, did a, uh, and I'll get it to you. It's a, uh, an all black one. Oh, yeah. I saw it uh, a couple weeks ago when I went on a tour. Man, I think it was killer looking. It that, maybe it's Bad Boy. It could be bad boy, but uh, I'll look it in. It's a really sweet color. Imagine that with the black lane shark. Yeah, and then all the lime green accents. Yeah. That would look slick. Yeah. I wish I I wish I had the time and just I don't care enough, but I wish I had my tractor was all black with 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 the uh lane shark green accents. That would look good. You got a spray can? <laughs> we can make that happen. Yeah. We can we'll, Photoshop it real we'll, time. We'll get Landon out there <laughs> with a spray can. He'll be black as the tractor. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I had him. Uh, I had him paint something for my boys the other day. We cut some um, cut some plywood strips to make like basically little roads for him for all their cars. And so I got Landon to paint them black for me. When he got done, his entire hands and everything was black. Yeah. And then he he tried to wash his hands, and then it just spread even more because it was like some sort of I guess lacquer paint or something. It couldn't. It wouldn't come off. So I'm out there, you know, spray cans, no, no mask, no nothing. He's just going at it, and well, I was he, like, "He's upside of the wind. He's not." Yeah, he's good. and I said, and I was looking at him, like seeing his hands getting dark, and I'm like, you know what? There's just we got gloves, but you know, when you're that those age, gloves are such a pain in the ass, though. True. I hate, I hate those rubber gloves. I'm just now getting to where like I'm keep, I'm very adamant about keeping safety glasses. So I'm, I'm. I'm get, I get where you're going, though. It's like the older I get, the safer I want to be because I'm much more in tune with my mortality. 
I decided to become safe with everything because of Daisy. So yeah, <laughs> it's like now I gotta okay, no more taking risks, no more doing this and that. I got someone to take care of. Yeah, it changes. You know. It changes your life whenever you have kids. It's like oh, yeah. you, you're no longer your life is no longer your own. Yeah, and it's just like I want to go do something. I'm like, wait a minute, let me see what she's got going. Yeah, <laughs> we have homework. <laughs> I want to go outside and play soccer. I don't gotta do homework. Homework, nap time. Yeah. Meal time, bath you know, time. She's done with the nap time. It's actually, you know, she had a long day at school. She'll come home and want to go to sleep for a little bit. We'll just give her like a little half hour nap, mm-hmm. kind of recharge before you do homework. Sometimes it goes two hours, it depends. But uh, it, it helps. You know, their workload at school at that age is insane. I don't remember any of that. I, I always, first grade, I mean, what? You know, the things they're doing, this, you know, science, social studies, um, you know, obviously language arts, fancy names for basically right. reading a book and doing one, you know, one plus one. But now they're into larger numbers and so forth, and it's amazing. It feels strange to me though. It's like the the schools are seem to be getting more involved, like heavier curriculum. But it seems like our population is going this way with the intelligence <laughs> compared to other countries. I agree with that. <laughs> compared to yeah. what we were doing whenever we were that age. Yeah, I know. I know it's like I'm the old geezer that talks about things were different in my day, but it just if something's different, it just I don't know. I don't get it. And you talk to people like young people like Landon's age, which Landon's exceptional, but other other people his age, just like a few years back, my mom and I went to the store in Mobile and we bought a hat. It was like seventeen twenty five. My mom hands the girl a twenty dollar bill. And a quarter. Her brain literally broke. She's like, well, what am I supposed to do with the quarter? It's 17. And my mom tries to explain it. And I just finally, I grab my mom. I'm like, let's just, just take the quarter back and get the, you know, get the change back and it'll be okay. Just stick with the flow. Don't, don't, don't overdo it these days. No, they're, it's, I can't blame them because it's becoming a cashless society. Yeah, but that's just uh, but one it's, example. It's not just like, not just that. It's, it's just all kinds of weird things that happen. This is not wanting to cooperate. You know, and, and Daisy's doing that in first grade right now. She's learning uh, coins and dollars and stuff and and her part of her math uh, curriculum for the second this semester. And and she has no clue. So what we did is we took candy, laid it on the counter, and made those five cents, ten cents, fifteen, twenty all the way up. And now she had to learn how to buy it from us. <laughs> and out of my, you know, yeah, so so she she's uh, she'll 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 do very well. <laughs> you got a little candy, I guess. But, yeah. Um, but uh, she earned um, she's earned ten dollars just on a random story. She earned ten dollars recently, and uh, we went to the store just to grocery shop. She's like, I want I want this bunny basket. And I'm like, Well, Easter's over. She goes, But I want that bunny basket. I said, Well, you got ten bucks. It's exactly ten bucks. She goes, Okay, I'll buy it. I'm like, Are you sure you want to spend? This ten dollars <laughs> on that basket, and she said, "Yep." I said, "Done." All right, so I bought it for her, and obviously now I got ten bucks cash in my pocket. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yeah, she she understood what she was buying, hmm. and that's uh, that's fine with me. So does she? Do you give her like chores to earn allowance or anything like that yet? Not yet. Um, I, I feel that getting up and doing your bed and things like that are. Part of your normal right. routine now. She got allowance money when she was helping me rake leaves and put them in the fire pit and um, things like that. Yeah, extra stuff that's not like normal everyday life. Yeah. I, I agree with that. She's out there with a shovel. She <laughs> out there. She got the rake. She raked it and then she used the shovel because I got a smaller shovel. She picks it up and pours it into the thing. She did it about four times. She's like, "Okay, right, I'm done." She goes back inside, <laughs> but she gives it an effort. I'd have a hard time being around her with a shovel. I'd be afraid she'd hit me. Probably. She would, yeah. yeah. We'll just leave it there. <laughs> <laughs> Little Ronda Rousey. Yeah, yeah. She uh, She's done a lot better, I would say, and since she was three or four, you know, kind of figuring it out that, you know, hey, you know, it hurts other people when you do that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but uh, she, you know, she she's such a – She's such a good little soul. She loves she loves everybody. She she cares for everybody. It's just that there's a side of her that when enough's enough, you know, she hasn't learned how to put that to bed right. consistently. 
years ago. Now she's doing it. So yeah, that's, that's it's awesome. Cool. Yeah, she's good. Yeah, I can't tell you how many days it was like. I got to run to the got to run to the school. Yep, got to go get her. <laughs> she got in trouble, but she. Uh, and and they make it sound like it was so bad. Oh like, yeah, of course they do. Like oh, she just walloped and just 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 remembered this child or something like stuff on. that back in our day would have just been like no no call nothing at all it would have been yeah. fine oh yeah you know mom and dad had to come up to high school since we brought up back in the day for a fight that i was in in school um i didn't start it you know we just got a religion class and the guy said something you know and that's all he had to say i don't know what happened <laughs> after that but went to the office and um you know the dean of men said, you know, so now just to preface this, the dean of men also was my head football coach. But so he said, uh, you know, who threw the first punch? And the guy said, I did. And he goes, OK, you're suspended for three days. You know, we'll call your parents. And uh, and I said, well, I, I hit him, too. He goes, OK, well, that's OK. We got a game tonight. And so <laughs> let's go over the plays. You know, he goes, are you understanding the formations? I'm like, yeah, yeah, I'm getting it. It was awesome. But, you know, I think that uh, using your hands to solve problems is not a good idea at any given time, unless you're in a football game, obviously. But. Well, yeah, there's a special <laughs> – there's a time and place when it's right. always necessary. But but, but Daisy has uh, learned that it's not – it's not, you know, keep your hands to yourself is a very big thing and, and what we talk about. So, you know, she's – She's doing good. She she got in trouble recently for something, but I, I'm just gonna have to say that it's just a freak accident because she she's done so well for such a right. long time um, that uh, she gets a pass for me. Sweet. Uh, yeah, you gotta have those every now and then. You got three boys gonna be getting old, and mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, I'm gonna be leaving. I'm gonna be leaving work every day. I'm sure. Well, I mean, you can just imagine them at the house. Mm-hmm. You know, it's, I I don't know anyone personally that had three boys. You know, or four boys, or whatever the case is, just boys growing up with them. I didn't get to experience that. It was usually a good mix, or mm-hmm. maybe just one and one, or two and one. But I mean, well, it's gonna be fun to watch. You'll get to hear the stories. Yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be a lot of fun. But we've got a lot of worker bees, so hopefully they take an interest in uh, metalworking or oh, yeah. tractors. They love tractors already, so hopefully they they maintain that, and we'll have some free labor for a little while. Teach them how to sell or something. Yeah, they'll be in here at eight years old welding. <laughs> I hope so. Yeah, it'll be it'll be fun. They they love coming up here already. I mean, they don't get to do anything, but they love at least coming up and hanging out at the shop. If Fitz was up here today, Jack had to go to doctor's appointments. So if Fitz hung out, he was in our our meeting with our our phone call with WR Long. So yeah, and if you if you go back to the camera, you know, you can get a still shot of that. There was a moment there where he was. Uh, I looked over and and he was standing there next to you. You're talking. He's paying attention to the conversation. He wasn't fidgeting or anything. And mm-hmm. looked like he was just in the meeting. I'd be a cool picture. Yeah, if you can get that. To go go back and look at it. Yeah. So what? Uh, to go back to work a little bit. Mm-hmm. What is? What are you most excited about over the next year for Lane Shark? It can't be. It can't be that side because that's everybody's answer. So you got to come up with a different one. For for me, it's the the developing of more relationships with more retail opportunities is the exciting part because we're if you look at percentages wise based on what tractor sales are in this country, you know we're we're at twenty five percent you know uh, penetration in 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 that market uh, as lane shark sales versus tractor sales maybe even less that's about twenty five percent I would say based on what dealers will sell. Per compatible tractor, mm-hmm. you know, you know, we're. I feel that in the next year, year and a half, you know, with if if everything stays the same, with uh, the way the market is, the economy, and things like that, we'll still have exponential growth, uh, and and that's what I'm excited about. You know, um, future projects too. You know, things that we've talked about. I'm excited for. The, the the international aspect of, of moving lane sharks across the pond, you know, that's happening now. We're working on that. Um, I still think it's bullshit. <laughs> I don't I don't believe this guy. Well, 
They keep they keep yanking. That's my what chain. you that's what you pay me for. Uh huh. So I'll I'll deal with that, and then I'll let you know if you're right. <laughs> so far, so far, I've been right. I've yet to see a purchase order. Yeah, but uh, it, it, obviously, it's a uh, it's a new realm that we're in, and we're 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 moving at their pace, and and I think it's uh, um, I think it turned into something really good if um, if it if it pans out. Mm-hmm. But not just there. Obviously, you know, we we want to move into areas. Um, there's a lot of green on this planet, you know. So there's a lane shark needed everywhere, and so the sky's the limit. So that's why I'm saying about growth. Um, you know, the retail growth is, is what I'm excited about. Um, uh, and, and then the expansion side, uh, internally here, you know, us becoming bigger, you know, giving more, you know, having the ability, having more internal health and resources and, right. um, you know, just, just as from the littlest to the largest thing, we, we can always use more help, uh, just to make things better. Right. You know, from every department, you know, could use it. So those are the things that get, that keep me motivated and, and seeing like there is no end unless we make it. Mm-hmm. We, we, if you say we're stopping, that's when it ends. Oh yeah. And that'll, uh, unless I die, that's not happening. Yeah. Cause I get, I get, I don't, I'm never satisfied. So we're always yeah. going to be doing something whether it works out or not, that's yet to be seen, but we're definitely going to be trying something. And, and the key thing I think what sold me is, is, is solving problems that people didn't know they had. Mm-hmm. And that's the, I think the lifeblood of this biz, of this of this company, you know everything that we've turned, well, I say we as 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 a whole, but created, you know, is it solves something, you know the from the you know the cutters to the the grill guard to the kits, it's always solving somebody's want or need, and it's not a luxury item. It's not a I don't have to have it kind of a thing. It's like they need to have it. If uh, if they're in that in that spectrum, right, and so I believe that you know all that will just keep going and just keep raising, and and I'm looking forward to it. Um, what are you excited for? To be honest, I was sitting here thinking about that as you're talking. I think the thing I'm most excited about is going to be the baby LS3. You know, we we put that little uh, hack together prototype together last week. And I've been thinking about it a lot. I've been building it a lot in my head. And I think because you got the, the hammerhead, we already we're already in that realm. Mm-hmm. It's just we're gonna have a, a way better LS4 essentially. It's a, it's a four foot model. It cuts it cuts just like the LS4. It's just a lot more luxurious, I guess. So that's that's obviously awesome. People are excited about it. I'm excited about it. But the baby LS3 will give us a whole new realm of customers that we can help. Because anything smaller than the three series or the the L2501 or all that, anything smaller than that, obviously we can't we can't help them. And so with this with the baby LS3, I think uh, to be named, let's let's say that instead of the baby LS3. But I I think that's going to be a a whole new realm. Yeah, it's more going to be of a front line, like not a front line starter cutter, if you would, but just one that's compatible for folks that are brand new tractor owners that have smaller applications that essentially, you know, will would use it sparingly, um, not big projects. Mm-hmm. You know, that's that's the consumer that we're going to go after. Um, the price point on it obviously dictates that, but the uh, the functionality is there for them. Right, you know, they have that now. Yeah, uh, and, and we and we get what three to five a week asking for that are in that small tractor range. And and we don't know how many people are looking for the regular LS three and LS four because we have that information out there and they get out their own. Mm. So since we don't have, you can always know what you what, what someone's looking for something when you don't have it. And and it is about three to five a week mm. that we get that. Just looking at uh, you know customer inquiries on our website, they they're asking for you know specific series that we're just not compatible with, and it's um it's definitely a large market. To tap into, yeah, you know, yeah, it's funny. Like I, I obviously I've been most excited about the manufacturing side, but that's as as you were talking. Like I, I do believe that that will be the baby, the the little baby LS three is going to be the my, 
I don't know. I, I could be wrong. It, it may not. It may not sell well, but I think I think it's going to be huge. I think if it's the pr- the price point is right, if we, we can make it uh-huh. right, you know, and and tap that the general, you know, the the customers. I mean, you know, tractors. You know, when somebody goes in and buys, for example, a, a B series Kubota or, or a one hundred series John Deere, what is the price point of those? Generally. I think they're between twenty and thirty, depending on what all attachments you get or add-ons you get. Yeah, so very affordable, economical. Actually, they may be as low as like fifteen. Yeah, but so, you can. I mean, the sky's the limit with those. Once you add a loader so. to it, you add an undercarriage cutter, and you do all those things to it, it gets up. But when you're looking at the Lane Shark itself, being on that loader, you know, if you're out the door twenty thousand dollars or something like that, there's a lot more people out there can afford that than it can afford these forty to fifty thousand dollar tractors that right. we're currently putting it on. So that's why I think it's going to be a big. Uh, and at the same time, the safety aspect of it, being able to have that machine out there in front where you're driving forward, you're not looking back, you know, there could be so much different things that can happen as you're turning, you know, looking mm-hmm. forward, you might hit something, you might have to turn. Just to being able to drive forward and cut uh, with um, just is, is the biggest game changer that, that has happened that you created. So with those people with the smaller tractors, hey, you know what, you get to do the same thing, you're you got your lane truck up front. You got your mower going underneath. You know you're cutting along. You're trimming along. You're mulching. Whatever it is you're trimming, that's going to be a pretty cool setup. Because a lot of those tractors that we're talking about, that the the baby lane shark, are, are ones that have the undercarriage center cutters, mm, belly mowers, belly mowers. Yeah. So that right there, they can mulch up, get a thicker blade under there, and mulch up whatever you're you're trimming. Mm-hmm. So marketing ideas. <laughs> yeah. Let me get it made first. Let me yeah. make sure I get it made to where I like it and that it's perfect. You got to make sure it works. Yeah. It'll it'll it it can happen a lot quicker than the hammerhead cuz there's a lot less components. So yeah, he's going to he's going to release that. It's going to be automatically <laughs> articulating. It's going to have a laser on it. It's going to be a lane shark with the laser. We're going to it's so uh, you can Sharks with laser beams. That's right. Yeah. You figure out how to make a laser cutter for the limbs. We'll put a we'll put a laser on it. Yeah, yeah. You, you, the first customer <laughs> that takes it out there, they they cut that branch and it cuts the billboard in the neighborhood. It cuts the people's houses. <laughs> cuts the, the wing off the airplane. Yeah. <laughs> uh, can imagine. Can imagine. Hmm. Never know. One day, technology just keeps going and going. Yeah, I've been thinking about the 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 Lane Shark lift. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> it's something that I'm going to explore. Not breaking news. No, yeah, we're not talking about it because I don't know if I'm gonna. I don't know how far I'll take it, but I'm gonna explore it. So we'll no. see. And for copyright things, we're not talking about L Y F T here. Okay, so it's. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so we talked about all that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. In in Ross's uh, podcast, we mentioned about your conspiracies. You wanna you want you wanna talk any conspiracies while while we got you. Um, you know, I like to hide in plain sight, so <laughs> it's uh. What does the bottom say? Slaves now. <laughs> this is your friend Juan. Uh, Juan. Uh, one hundred and seven. Oh seven. Yeah. Um, the world according to Juan. Well, you know what my name is. Mm-hmm. So. I thought that was. I thought you had that shirt made for you, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, I didn't want to make that the thing, but, um, no, uh, conspiracies. Well, you know, uh, there's no such thing as conspiracies. So it's, uh, it's, uh, it's the truth based on the eye of the beholder. That's all that is. It's what you believe in, what somebody else believes in and see if there's a middle ground. Yeah. But there, there is, there is truth somewhere in the, in all of it. So they, it's they, not just what you believe. Th- there's the other word that's always, um, thrown in there with conspiracies is called coincidences. Mm-hmm. And so you have to have a mathematical equation on how many coincidences until it's no longer a coincidence. And uh, I, I use the same format with the term conspiracy. It's how many conspiracies until it's no longer a conspiracy. You know, well, all of it is the truth. It's just a matter of what you believe in. <laughs> and uh, that's it. You know, there's no other way to go about it. Okay. Well, I think... Uh... I think we'll leave it at that. Yeah, and, and and I just want to introduce you to my mentor. You know, 
I'm not a mentor. I just I was just the spark that lit the fuse. You, and I wish You're not giving yourself some, enough credit. Some days <laughs> some days I wish I would have put water on the fuse. <laughs> Other days it's extremely entertaining. Yeah, you definitely you definitely opened up some rabbit holes that um I wasn't thinking about. Mm. So it, it was very it was very fun to take that journey. And I enjoyed it. I, I will say though, the last month of not being on any social media and not paying attention to any of that bullshit, mm -hmm. I've been happier than it than at any time in the past four years. My mind is less cluttered. I don't worry about the shit that I can't control. So it's been nice. It has been pure entertainment for me to listen and read the things that people are saying and worried about. Like, why are you worried about it? It doesn't affect you. Like you have why why put the emotional side? It's just pure entertainment. I get to laugh a lot. It affects me in the sense that like the the people that are around me in the world that are mm. trending down. That's how it affects me. Gotcha. This world is is. I know there's a lot of great stuff happening, but this seems like there's some really weird stuff happening, and it just sometimes it just gets to me. So that's yeah. why I'm not paying attention to it no more. You know, and, and people talk about like the economy and all this and that, all part of all the things. And they say, hey, look, you know, well, how bad is it going to be? Well, do what we did. We just increased our marketing budget by like 80% and look where we're at. So, <laughs> you know, don't don't worry about something you can't control. <laughs> yep. I don't know. It's, it is kind of like, I don't, I try not to stress about the economy because like no matter if things go up or down, like we'll figure out a way to always to do something. Like when in 08, whenever the market crashed and I was building houses, like I was building houses in the middle of the mar the worst market we've ever had. And I made more money than anybody around me. Because so you I, kept working. Everybody right, else was just bailing out. Keep your head down and mm -hmm. push forward and make, make progress. And that's all you can really do. Like that is one thing that I have. I've, I've definitely worked on is trying not to pay attention to things that I can't control because whatever happens around me is going to happen, whether I know about it or not. But all that matters is what I, what I do about it when it does happen. So we'll just leave it at that. We can. Well, JC, I appreciate it. Oh, thank you. Appreciate thank you it. for everything. Nope. Thank you for having me. I guess I'll have you for another five, six years at least. I want to retire in 15. We'll see where we are. <laughs> I might let you go. I might not. All right. Cool. Y'all right. heard it here. <laughs> Love you, man. Right. I appreciate it. Yeah. This has been Lane Sharkin with Travis and JC. Hopefully uh, you guys enjoyed it. If not, tell us about it. Tell us what you like, what you love. And if you got any special requests or anybody that wants to come on, give us a shout. Shoot us a comment. And we can sit here and shoot the shit and... Hang out. Smash that like button. <laughs> Thank you, guys, and uh, we'll see you on the next one.